After listening to these many wonderful speakers, starting with uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir and uh, even the students, our students, the members of the organizing committee, organizing team, I'll be here just to share a few things about the things that will be useful for you people to better your English for your better tomorrow. That's why the title has been framed this way. Better your English for better tomorrow. Nowadays, you know, there is a huge competition in the outer world. After you complete your formal education, you come across the ladies and the gentlemen who may be different from you. Of course, I won't say that you need to compare yourself with them, with those people. But still, we need to be prepared so that you can stand different from others. And as rightly said by some other speaker, that we have some quality that can, with, with the help of that quality, we can stand different from others. Just we need to get exposed to all these situations. I could pick up the word exposure from the abstract that was being displayed there on the screen, abstract of TEDx. This exposure is very important. If we want to prove ourselves, if we want to improve ourselves. And as a part of that, in order to face this competition, in order to interact the people in a different manner or maybe in an efficient manner, we must be exposed to different situations where we may find different opportunities to enhance our knowledge or add something to our knowledge. And as a part of that, I have selected a few things for you. I hope uh, this is not everything about it. It may take at least three hours to discuss everything about it. But still, I'll uh, share just a few things with you. Basically, the language. I'm talking about language. This is considered very important because uh, it reflects our knowledge as well as our personality. And that is why even while using our mother tongue, so you might have observed many, many speakers, in spite of the language, it may be any language, Indian language or foreign language, people, when they are addressing the public, they may have a different pronunciation, they may have a different tone, and uh, when it's a private meeting or discussion, you might have seen there is a different tone they use. It is not just to impress them, it is to reach the audience in an effective manner. It is, it is just to reach the audience in an effective manner. That's why this language is very important, not only English, but it may be any other language. Because that would reflect your knowledge and your personality. When we use, when we think, when we talk about any language, there are different aspects we need to think about. I have listed only three for you here. The first aspect is pronunciation, second is grammar, and the third is vocabulary. People call it diction also. Pronunciation is a wide area where we need to work very hard. I hope most of you have taken the opportunity to listen to many speakers through internet and you might have realized something, you might have added something to your knowledge. If you think about this word itself, the word pronunciation, it is 
one of the most mispronounced words in English. There are many words in English which are not pronounced properly. And this is one of such words. I still remember the TV commercial of uh, a DTH company, Tata Sky, where a mother and a child were interacting with each other. And uh, I think the child says the word, this word is pronounced as pronunciation, pronunciation. Whereas its verb form is pronounced in a different form, that is pronounce. And with the help of some logic, we try to guess that its verb form is pronounced as pronounce. So definitely its noun form should be pronounced in the same fashion. No. Who can teach you these things? I think one of the best teachers would be experience. One of the best teachers would be experience. If you listen to many good speakers, users of English, definitely you can improve these things. Each and every language has different sounds. We, being the non-native users of English, are not exposed to all these sounds. Again, you can use electronic media, you can use internet to get exposed, get a wider exposure to all these sounds. I'll explain how, I'll try to justify my statement later on. Sometimes you may be interpreted based on the way you pronounce different words in English or the particular language. That's why we need to be more careful while pronouncing these words, while uttering these words. People think that there must be some rules for pronunciation of different words in English. Do you think there are some rules? What do you think? Yes, there are? No? Okay, there is a mixed response. People, some of you say yes, some of you say no. If at all there are some rules, I would ask to share that title with us, title of the book where these books are, uh, these rules are printed. Is there any speaker who has shared certain rules with you? The rules that are related to the pronunciation of the words in English. Is there any reason behind the fact that CH is pronounced as K? Combination of two letters CH is pronounced as K maybe ch or sh. Is there any reason behind it? No. But there is one, one rule for pronunciation. There is one rule for the pronunciation. Can you guess that rule? This is not printed in any book, unfortunately. This is not printed in any book, but that is this is the statement, this is the rule, that there is no rule for the pronunciation, there is only, uh, there are only conventions, there are only conventions. The way people, the way good users of English, the way good speakers pronounce these words, we imitate them, we copy them, we follow them. And we believe that native users of English are good users of English. But I would say, this is not a, any, any kind of exaggeration, but this is just an observation that there are many users of English in India who are better speakers, better users of English than the native users. There are many. We must be proud of that. And they could acquire all these things, they could learn all these things by means of experience, and uh, they, these people are always in search of the opportunities to learn something. I mean, they are simply the lifetime students. They are simply the lifetime students. They haven't given up the efforts to learn something 
the efforts to polish their language or enhance their language. That's why there are no rules for pronunciation. It is just the experience or you may say the conventions or just by listening to others we can enhance these things. That's why I would suggest you people to listen to many people as the other speaker was talking about humanities. He said we need to read a lot. I would add something to that at the end of my talk. There are some words, just for example, I have uh, chosen, I have picked up a few words. There are many words which belong to this category. Starting with some common words, the first two words may be very common. T-O-M-A-T-O. -O. This word is pronounced in different ways, different manners. If you go to the market, if you ask that vegetable seller to pronounce this word, that pronunciation may vary based on the region he belongs to. The region he belongs to. A man from Lonere or Raigad, Gorega would pronounce this word in a different fashion. Many of you go to a vegetable market and you might have observed the way they pronounce it. If you go to a vegetable seller from Jalgaon, he will pronounce it in a different fashion. Go to Nagpur or Aurangabad or Kolhapur, these people will pronounce it in a different fashion, different way. So what is the standard pronunciation who can guide you about it? It is only, I think, a dictionary can guide you about it. The same thing is with the second word. Normally we don't use that uh, English word when we are interacting with that vegetable seller in Marathi or Hindi. Either we would say alu or in Marathi we would say batata. But when we use English, most often people would pronounce it as potato. This is the very common pronunciation used by the speakers when they use English word. But at least 50% of us might not be knowing that it is pronounced in a different fashion. If you listen to a white man, a native speaker, it is pronounced as potato. Potato. So, when we listen to these people, good users of English, definitely we can add something to our knowledge. The next two words, third and fourth word, these are very common. There are many NCC cadets sitting among us. They might have explored the actual pronunciations of these two words. If not, I would request them to go for it. Because there is no relationship. When we say C-O-L-O-N-E-L, Many people try to pronounce it based on that spelling. And that's why I have said that there is no rule for that. There is no rule for that. Let us go to, I'll skip one word. Let us go to the sixth word that starts with D, D A I S. In many formal functions we have seen, the people use this word. The only problem is that they don't have the realization that the actual pronunciation of the word is different. 95% people, it is observed that 95% of the people use das. They use the word, they use the pronunciation das, they pronounce this word as das. D-A-I-S. But the Oxford Dictionary says that it is not pronounced as das, it is pronounced as Days, days. Some of you may feel that no, but it's true. It's true. It's not a true fact. Huh? It's not a true fact. Huh? It is true. People have developed this habit saying true fact. Huh? So, we cannot believe that this word is believe. Uh, this word is pronounced as days because we are habituated to listen to the, the only pronunciation that is das. But due to the lack of curiosity, we never tried to get a dictionary or to get some uh, standard resource, refer to some standard resource and explore what is the fact. Similarly, there are many other words like champagne. 
The another word F A C A D. Just now, Colonel, pronounce that word in the right manner. Facade. And the another very common word R E C E I P T. This is a very common word. Day to day, you have to pay something and you have to get a piece of paper from that cashier. You call it. Many of us call it receipt. We utter p there. But this is not receipt. This is receipt. Receipt. It's not receipt. It is receipt. Receipt. Try to bring in that rhythm in your speech. The way the native speakers do. The way you do while using your mother tongue. Maybe Hindi, Marathi or any, any other language. We use some kind of rhythm there. We call it intonation. We call it intonation. We need to use proper tone there. So it is receipt. Another word or the next two words, again, there are a few problems with these two words. People try to pronounce the letter G in P H L E G M. They have to carry on several exercises when they have to pronounce such words. But this is pronounced as phlegm. Phlegm. Again, the moment I pronounce this word as phlegm, then some people would have a question. Then how can we differentiate between some homophones or the words that are pronounced in the same fashion? Because the moment you listen to phlegm, you could have visualized another word, F-L-A-M-E. We witnessed it at the beginning of this program. Again, we can differentiate. We can differentiate between these two. This one is pronounced as phlegm and the latter is pronounced as flame, flame. We can differentiate between these two words. Just we need to get exposed to the different situations where people would be using language or especially this language, English language. Date, we have homophones for this word, D-E-B-T or maybe this word, D-A-T-E. Date and the other word is pronounced as debt. But people fail to pronounce the other word D-E-B-T. It is observed, they pronounce it as debt. They pronounce B or letter B. There are many words, this list is endless. Just I could pick up only a few words for you. I want you to explore such words during your leisure so that you can polish your language and this would be useful for you while communicating at different situations. It may be an interview, it may be this kind of interaction, it may be any expert talk, it may be any lecture or it may be any informal discussion. If you do so, definitely it will be a value addition. Another important area we need to focus on, we can talk about is G-R-A-M-M-A-R. Again, there is a same trouble. There is There are two troubles here. One is its spelling and the other is its pronunciation. See, this is my actual experience while teaching certain things in the class that are related to grammar, I have to write this word on the board, grammar. And every year, you may not believe, every year I come across at least two students who try to suggest me, who try to correct me, sir, the spelling is wrong. The spelling is wrong. Of course, they do it privately after the class. But means, see, every year I get at least two students. Means there is a major trouble with its spelling. This is correct. Huh? This is correct. And the second trouble is with its pronunciation. Again, this is because of the lack of exposure to this language. <clears throat> I have listed a few common mistakes. This is based on experience, again. I was eaten a mango. People don't have the realization that I am using a wrong statement. It is just because of the lack of knowledge of grammar. They are very much confident while making this statement. But we must have that realization. 
we, we must try to understand whatever I have spoke is correct. They also sometimes say, she said me, she liked you. She said me, she liked you. Normally people feel nothing is wrong here. But if you have studied direct indirect speech, you, you, you may recall that there is some problem with the reporting work. Said to should be replaced by to. I need two days leave to sell my land along with my wife. The gentleman who was making the statement will be definitely beaten by his wife. Because he doesn't know grammar, structure in English. First come, first serve. This is also very common. In many programs, at many occasions, we use this expression. First come, first serve. Right? Many of you may use this. The moment you write it this way, in this way, the moment you pronounce it in this way, something is wrong there. What is wrong? First come, first serve. It means that you should come first and you should serve others. You should serve others. That is not the intention to phrase this phrase. What is the intention behind this phrase? First come, if you come first, you will be served first. But the moment you miss letter D with sir, it changes to me. That man would report first so that he serve first. That's why. We need to be a very good observer. Very good observer. One of the boys was speaking loudly. I have the corrected forms, corrected sentences for you. You can uh, read out. Meanwhile, I discussed the last one. One of the boys was speaking loudly. People feel that voice must be followed by a plural verb, but no. Whenever we have the combination, whenever we have a phrase or a noun phrase like one of the or each of the followed by any plural countable noun, it must be followed by a singular word. But people neglect it. They neglect it. And, a, and the similar questions may be asked you, asked or framed for some competitive examinations you will be awaiting from. And at that time you must know these facts. That is about grammar. <coughs> Another troublesome area for us is vocabulary. Some people call it diction. Vocabulary? What is vocabulary? That is simply the knowledge, the knowledge of different words and its usage. Usage of the words in English is, it is very important. It is very important. Again, a good user of English or maybe the dictionary can help you about the usage of different words in English. That is why you need to use right words for the right situation. This is very important. Right words for the right situation. Sometimes prefixes and suffixes can guide us to guess the context. That's why guessing the context is another important skill. And uh, some examples are there we would be, these examples would be very funny if we use the right word for the right situation. If we fail to use right word for the right situation, it will be very difficult for us to convey our ideas to the people. I hope you have read all these examples. I am not going to read this. Or every, I already <coughs> have read these examples. The solution. Maybe within 30 minutes I'll write them. The solutions for this problem or these problems are, I think, keep on listening, speaking, reading and writing. Keep on listening, speaking, reading and writing. And the other solution is K-I-S-S. -S. It is keep it short and simple because our objective is to reach the audience. Do not make it complicated. Do not make your language complicated. That's all. That was the only message I wanted to share with you people to go with, to keep reading, speaking, listening and writing as the Colonel has rightly stated. Thank you very much.